It's week four of Black History Month here in the UK. And this week, I want to talk about the infamous Tuskegee experiment. There's always this unspoken suspicion amongst Black people when it comes to healthcare. You know, taking medication, going and seeing the doctor, that kind of thing. Now, don't get me wrong, Black people will, of course, see a doctor. But there is a sort of fear that runs through the community. And I've touched on this before. If you believe in trauma embedding itself in DNA, then perhaps the sheer fuckery that took place during the Tuskegee experiment contributes to that fear. Although one might not be completely au fait with what went down in Alabama, most people do know there's a story of some sort that details the use of black people in an experiment designed to understand and cure syphilis. Just for context, syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection that can show itself as sores around the genital area along with a rash on hands and feet and also one might present with white patches inside the mouth. A blood test is of course the only surefire way to confirm syphilis is present in the body. Okay so this is how it went. Back in 1932 when there was absolutely no treatment for syphilis, someone had the ingenious idea of recruiting 600 African-American men to be part of a program that aimed to study the progression of the disease in return for the promise of free healthcare. The study was actually named the Tuskegee Study of Untreated Syphilis in the Negro Male. And the overall goal of the study was, and I quote, to observe the natural history of untreated syphilis in black populations. Now, just a point to note, which I don't doubt everybody is already aware of, syphilis is not a disease exclusive to black people. Nope, not even close. Anybody can get that. Just saying. Okay, so there was this promise of free healthcare. So suspicion clearly wasn't a thing back then. Because if I'm understanding you want to study the progression of something, and then you're saying you're going to give me free healthcare, something would start to stink in my mind. I mean, how are you going to watch something progress if you're giving me healthcare, which would potentially stop the progression of whatever it is that you're trying to monitor, right? I guess things were different then. Very different. Plus, I guess we have to take into account the fact that participants were not actually told what they were really involved in. They were just told they were being treated for bad blood. So anyways, these men who, by the way, most of which had never visited a doctor before, so had no idea of what to expect, which kind of explains why they wouldn't have had the same level of suspicion I just mentioned, were put on the program. 399 of them had what was considered latent syphilis, which is basically where the disease is in the body, but it's not showing any visible signs or symptoms. And the other 201 were disease-free. So basically you had a controlled group, which was the 201 disease-free men, along with the experimental group, which was the ones that actually had syphilis. All of the men were monitored and given aspirin and other mineral supplements which was basically placebo. But more disturbingly, these men were never given penicillin, which actually became the recommended treatment for syphilis during the study. It was so deep because the public service health researchers that were overseeing the experiments convinced local physicians not to treat these men. And alternatively, research continued at the Tuskegee Institute. Imagine, despite the promises of healthcare, no effective care was ever provided, which ultimately allowed the researchers to track the disease's full progression, something which was blatantly on the agenda from the get-go right? The men with syphilis suffered greatly. Some went blind, some went crazy, others experienced a whole plethora of severe health issues, and some even died. At no point was healthcare ever given to these men. This experiment was so deep that even when an investigator flagged up the unethical nature of the study, a committee was formed by public service health officials under the guise of reviewing the happenings, but they decided to keep it going to see how things panned out. Once an individual died, autopsies were done and data was taken, recorded and analysed. Literally, subjects of a study. Eventually the study got exposed in 1972 and was subsequently shut down, but the damage had been done. Heck, by the end of it, the disease had even been passed on to 19 children during childbirth because the spouses of these guys in this study became infected. The whole thing is just disgusting, right? So imagine, these facts alone are despicable enough. Now add into the mix that this happened in a time where slavery was very much a recent thing. And as a direct result, the medical and cultural landscape of the states was literally built on racist concepts with white people believing they were above 
black people. And thus medicine and science was all too happy to reinforce these ideals. I mean, when you consider science in particular was used to justify the use of black people as slaves, claiming that it was basically okay because African men were, and I quote, physically strong with simple minds, you realize just how much of a liberty everything was, and that's putting it mildly. The scientific justification went further still by arguing that slaves had primitive nervous systems, which essentially meant they didn't experience pain like white people and would therefore be able to tolerate a lot more, work harder for longer, and just basically withstand hardship and labour better. And in addition to that, it was also decided that African people were more likely to suffer from mental illness, which is why being enslaved, hear this, would actually be good for them. Good for them, you know. Lord have mercy. Could you imagine? We haven't finished yet. It was during and after the American Civil War when apparently it was decided that African people, or rather African American people, were now seen as a completely different species to white people. A whole different species. You're getting this, yeah? Science later decided that whilst the brains of African-American men were underdeveloped, their genitals were actually overdeveloped. They also concluded that African people as a whole were sexually insatiable. Oh, and according to scientific authorities, black men had an innate perversion for white women specifically too. I think that last bit was more down to the fact that many white men felt sexually inferior to black men and thus decided that black men would actually do a better job of satisfying their women than they could. So rather than feel inadequate, it was just easier to blame everything on the black man. Anyway, as I always say, that's another video. It's too much. It really is. But yeah, basically all these things contributed to the decision-making process around using black men in the Tuskegee experiment in the first place. I suppose it can kind of be compared to using animals for testing cosmetics. Kind of, if you know what I mean. In that, you justify the action by claiming they don't feel like humans and therefore it's okay, apparently, to be subjected to lesser treatment. Same sort of mentality, you know what I mean? Black people were seen as less significant. So much BS shrouded this whole study from lying about administering treatment through to outright denying patients of medication. It's just horrific. Absolutely horrific. So many attempts to expose the atrocities were, were made too, but you know how it goes when the powers that be are involved. It's just not happening. Not so easily anyway. Thankfully, after mass public outrage. A class action lawsuit was won by the National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People and treatment for all those that survived was paid for. Imagine the last of the participants died as recently as 2009. I can only end this video by saying one thing. That is a lot.